Hello everyone and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care Channel. I'm Dwayne and I'm a certified RV inspector. Today we're going to be talking about your RV water connection and specifically five tips that I have for you to make sure that connection is as good as it possibly can be. So let's just dive right into it. The number one tip on the list. Make sure that when you choose a water hose, you are choosing a food grade water hose. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people just go to the store and they grab a garden hose off the shelf. And, and it, it probably sounds like that would work fine, but actually not. Water or garden hoses are designed with uh, materials in them that can be hazardous to your health if they're ingested. And those materials can leach in to the water as the hose is used and you ingest it. So why not be safe? As you can see, I've replaced uh, one of my hoses here just recently. This is what I bought. Notice it says drinking water hose. It may say drinking water safe. It may say food grade. Whatever, just make sure that it's manufactured to a higher standard. You see, garden hoses are not manufactured to those standards. That's why they're cheaper, and uh, yes, you can buy them at a lower price, but why gamble with your health? Make sure that you get a food grade uh, water hose for your RV. Now, one other thing I'm going to mention here is when I decided to buy a hose this time, I went for a little longer one. You know, there's all those 25-foot hoses out there, and uh, it, it seems, sounds like that should be fine for you. But in reality, when you stay at a lot of different campgrounds, you're going to find that the water connection may not always be very close. So there's been several occasions where I've actually had to use two hoses when I only needed a few more feet for the water hose. So I'm going to try a 35 foot hose this time and hopefully that will solve the problem. So this is my number one tip. Make sure it's a food grade hose. Get, get a longer one if possible. Tip number two, when you buy a water hose, make sure it has metal connections. I mean, we've all seen the hoses that have the little plastic ends on them, right? And they're cheaper, but they're cheaper for a reason. You know, when we put these connections on the faucet at the campground or sometimes even into our RV, why sometimes we have to put a little uh, extra English on it to get it to really tighten up, right? Well, what does that do to a plastic connection? Uh, it, it's not good for it. It wears it out very quickly and you're just replacing your hose. So instead, look for the metal fittings on your hose. And that way the hose that you buy, since you're paying more for it anyway, because it's a uh, food grade or drinking water hose, uh, it'll last longer and you won't have to replace it as often. Now, one other thing to mention about hoses, make sure that they are 5 8 inch uh, in diameter. Uh, if you aren't careful, you might actually be buying a half inch hose. And that may not sound like it's all that much different between half inch and 5 8 I mean, it's only an eighth of an inch, right? It's, it's amazing the difference it can make in the flow rate of the water into your RV and therefore out of your faucets and out of your shower head. So make sure that the hose is a 5 8 hose. Now let's move on to our third tip and that is about water pressure regulators. Now if you've seen my videos in the past you know that I did a video on uh, certain items that I felt were very important for an RV water connection and one of those items is a water pressure regulator. I feel it's absolutely essential when you're RVing. The reason why is because from campground to campground you don't know what you are tying into for water pressure. Sometimes it can be extremely high. Uh, I mean, most of the time it's a little low, quite honestly, but sometimes it's very high. And if you aren't careful, you tie in to that water connection, uh, there could be damage that's done to your plumbing system inside the RV. That's not a good thing. 
because any kind of repair inside on your inside plumbing is most likely going to be fairly expensive. So here's my third tip. When you buy the water pressure regulator, I recommend that you get one that has a gauge on it, not just a dial that says, you know, good, fair, or poor, but a gauge and tells you what the PSI is of the water that's actually going into your RV. Uh, why is that important? Well, because you know what you're getting at that point. Also, these gauges uh, can be adjusted. There's a little screw on the top of it. If you need a little more water pressure, well, then you can just tighten it down a little bit and you get more. If it's kind of high to begin with, then just loosen it up and you'll get a lower water pressure. The whole idea is that at least with a gauge, you know what you're working with. It's not just some dial that you are hoping is doing the right thing for you. So when you buy a water pressure regulator, be sure that it has the gauge on it. Now, how do you know what pressure you want in your RV? Well, that's kind of subjective, quite honestly. But uh, when you look on the internet and you read the various forums and recommendations that are given there, you'll see that it's very common uh, to suggest that if your RV is an older one, say older than just a couple of years or so, you may want to go with a, a PSI of somewhere between 45 and 50 uh, in that area. If it's it's a newer RV, uh, you know, manufactured recently, why they've probably tested the uh, water system all the way up to 100 PSI anyway, but probably you don't want to go over about 60, maybe 65 uh, PSI, but it's up to you. You can try it. The nice thing is when you have a water pressure regulator with the gauge, it allows you to make the adjustments that you want to make for your RV. Okay, it's time for tip number four, and that is to get one of these or more of these. And what is it? It's a 90 degree elbow for your water connection. And why do you need these anyway? Well, if you've noticed, the water connection on most RVs is vertical. In other words, it's, it's on a vertical wall but your hose is coming in horizontally. So just think of the pressure, the stress that that creates on the hose as it goes into the RV. Now over time, gravity does its work, and as a result, the connection of the hose will weaken. But if you have one of these right here, you just screw that right into that water connection on the side of the RV, and now the hose is coming up from the bottom. Gravity is working with you. It's not working against you. And uh, that's a really good thing. It makes it a lot easier to make these connections. The second reason, or the reason why I would recommend that you have a second uh, elbow or more, is because the faucet connection at the campground often can be kind of weird. In fact, uh, the, it could really come in handy when you have a faucet connection that's low to the ground. You, you may have one that's so low to the ground that it's difficult to get the hose up to it without kinking the hose. And I've had that happen. So with this, you just screw in the 90 degree uh, elbow and then the water connection comes in from the side and uh, everything is fine at that point. So this is a great little thing to have. It won't cost you much, but uh, it will definitely uh, pay for itself in no time. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, tip number five, is what to do with your water connection when it's cold weather. And I'm not talking about just a little chilly. I'm talking about when uh, you get down to maybe around freezing and it might stay that way for a few hours or so. Now, if you're an RVer and most of us uh, that are full timers, we hit this at some point. Or if you're an RVer that uh, RVs on the shoulder seasons, you know that you can kind of hit a few nights like that where it's very cold. Now, what do you do then? Well, my recommendation is if you know the temperature is going to get down to about freezing and stay around that area for a few hours, 
disconnect the water supply. Just make sure there's water in your freshwater tank and uh, use that instead. Don't tempt it with the connection from the, the campground faucet. Why do I say that? Well, just recently I had the whole thing uh, brought home to me when I had a connection at a campground faucet and I had my filter tied into that connection because I use one before it goes in to the RV and then a second filter to clean it further inside the RV. Well the one on the outside I disconnected the hose from the RV but I didn't remove the filter from the faucet. The next morning I got up and the, faucet, the filter had frozen, the water in it had frozen and expanded and tore that filter in half. Now that brought home to me what water can do to your RV. If it's connected up to uh, a water source and it gets very cold for hours at a time, and this didn't last for a long time, it was just a few hours but it did its damage. So don't take chances. If you know that uh, the temperature is going to get down to freezing or below, uh, it's best to just unhook and that way you can be safe. And by the way, it's also a good idea to remove any filters out there and put them in where they'll stay warm as well. Now, I want to also mention that uh, if you would, it would be a good idea to watch uh, the video that I have that goes right along with this about water filtration. Uh, it'll fit right in with what we're talking about and uh, I go into a little bit more discussion about filters and how to use them and so on and how to get a cost-effective and simple water filtration arrangement. Well, if you enjoyed this video that I made today, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video. See, that helps uh, us YouTube creators uh, it, because they like to see videos that have likes. But I like it even more if you would join our online family and subscribe to our channel. I'm putting out videos like this every week now and you don't want to miss anything because I'm sharing some very important information with you, some that you may not hear anywhere else. So be sure to subscribe. And finally, if you have any comments about water uh, connections, uh, experience you've had in the past with them, what you do that's a little bit different than what we talked about today, please leave it in the comments below. That would uh, be much appreciated. We would love to hear from your experience as well. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.